Today we're training Grouser and we're going to set up a hunt test slash field trial course. He's just finishing up his hunt test right now and then we're going to do field trials. So we have a long line here. We're going to put birds at the end of this long line and then run around the course and set a bird, set the birds on the lines or in objectives where he can stretch out a little bit where, where he finds those birds and he gets out and stays on his lines a little bit better. Place their head under their wing is an easy way to do this, and then lay them down, and then they go to sleep. And then they wake up in a while, and should be close by. So this is that line that we just set the bird on the end of. It's way down there on the end of the line. It's about 300 yards, so when I come around this corner, we'll be on the ATV, we'll go kind of fast and keep him moving forward and try to get him to scoop right to the end on that bird. The wind is a little bit out of this direction here. If you're ever uh, wondering about the wind, you can turn your face. I do this a lot in the field. It's kind of like a weather vane. You can feel like, you know, if you mess with this a little bit, you can feel it on your face, which side it's on. And now the, the wind is directly out of this direction, just like a weather vane. Um, so he'll run up this line, that should be a nice easy find for him, and develop him to run down those lines and stay on those lines. So he's going to come through through here by this pond, this is going to be our course, we're setting the course backwards. So he's going to come through here, we kind of want him between 10 and 2, um, pushing forward. So if he comes through here and hits these trees a little bit, these are objectives that he'll, he'll search hopefully. He'll come through here and run this line a little bit, then I want to push him through or he'll move through and hit this line and if he moves it up if he moves up it a little ways uh, that'll be great so he comes through here he hits this line he moves up here um, i'll put the bird right up here and then if he stays between 10 and 2 these are broken lines along here but he can still hunt them uh, and, and keep moving Want him to run away on you. Same thing, you take the head, tuck it under the wing, and it sleeps. And make that look a little bit easier than it is. Um, just mess with the bird a little bit, wait till it kind of settles down. Okay, so here's a spot here. I'll put a little bit of cover over top of them. And then he should stay there. You make a little nest for him almost. I'm not worried about my scent. Um, I'm okay if he tracks me a little bit here. I can always set off the wheeler and cut down that scent a little bit. Plus we run on wild birds and there's no scent there for him to follow. Um, but I'm not really worried about scent. Uh, I don't have gloves on. Uh, the dog will run this edge. Um, some people like to wear gloves. Uh, it's really not a big deal to me. Grouser is a cover dog too. He's running cover dog trials. So uh, with this bird, I have an option of putting it on this line. I'll probably work that angle as well. Um, put a bird down at the end of this line and then get him on that line and move down it. Um, but on this part of the course, I think I'll put a bird down in this willow brush. That's a nice place. This aspen willow brush is a nice place for a woodcock or a grouse to hide. Um, so I'm going to use that on this on this bird. Wind is, wind is out of this direction, so um, he's got to get down past this cover to find this bird. Uh, he may also track me. If he tracks me, then he's going to hit this wrong because the wind is at, our, at, at my back. Make a nice little place right here. Find some cover for your birds. They'll stay a lot better. If you put them out in the open grass, they're, they're going to run off. They're going to fly to the nearest cover. Uh, this way, that, that bird should be there. I didn't dizzy it up or anything. I want it to wake up and have its awareness so it can, it can take off if, if the dog moves in too close. Grouser's pretty good. He, he, he kind of sticks them. He points them where he smells them. Um, but some dogs might want to move in there, and we want the bird to have 
awareness when the dog comes in so they can get out of there and then we can stop the dog to the flush if they're at that level of training. Now this one's a little bit different down here. It's either switched or um, yeah, it's definitely switched. So now this wind kind of feels a little more southeast. And again, you can turn your head, you can feel the wind on, on, on this cheek, on this cheek, and then you can find the middle of it and you can check the wind anytime when you're, when you're in front of the bird dog. Um, but it's, it's right here. So he's got to get into this cover, which isn't ideal for, for AKC field trials. Um, I'd rather have him run in this edge, but for grouse trials, for cover dog trials, getting in there is okay too. And that's our number one objective with this dog is, uh, is cover dog trials. Um, he won a trial this spring, so he's uh, qualified for championships this fall. So that's, that's, that's a big deal for a short hair. So we're basically, that's our main focus with him. So I'll just put this bird, this, this cover's heavy. I'm okay if this wanders around a little bit. And you just kind of tuck their head under their wing again. And then lay them down. I'm not going to put it in super heavy cover, not like not make a nest for it. I'm just going to tuck it along this edge. And then this bird can maybe wake up and move around in here a little bit. Um, that would be good, good too. Uh, that way, if he does get too close to the bird, it'll fly and we can stop the flush on it. So we're setting the course backwards. Um, and he has some scent to follow that way and that's okay uh, when you run AKC trials they are the same course, so there's, there's scent along them. So if he kind of follows my general scent, he'll, he'll break off and hunt, he'll run his, you know, he'll run the way he wants to run, he's gonna cover ground. But he can, as a general pathway that he can pick up and follow, uh, that's, that's this trail, and that's training to the, to the trial. Um, you know, we're just finishing hunt tests right now, and it's really important to, to train to the test. So we want to use quail because quail are in the test. First, we have to train the dog. Once he's trained, we have to develop him, condition him for a, a hunt test, which is planted quail. And um, usually a bird field, but for him, he's running, he's gonna run trials. He's running trials, so we're running more of a continuous course, which is uh, birds all the way around the course. Where a bird field would be, would, would involve a back course, usually a 20 minute back course and then 10 minutes in the bird field. And the bird field would be you know, maybe 30 acres or 20 acres of a grass area where they put birds in and go in there and work those birds. So we're running a continuous course. We're leaving kind of some scent here by planting this course. We're just planting it backwards because that's where um, that's where the birds are when we caught them just for convenience sake. But then he can follow my general scent and he can work that course and pick up those birds along the way and um, we'll try to keep him moving forward kind of quickly. We're on an ATV, so we can keep, keep him moving kind of quickly. Uh, and, uh, and basically, we almost race him around the course, and then we kind of back off on that throttle when he's out like he's supposed to. If he, they call it yo-yoing when a dog comes in too close, uh, like a yo-yo. Uh, we want to try to discourage that. And usually we can accelerate if he yo-yos and uh, comes in too close and kind of kind of just get him moving back out front. Okay, we're gonna run him. We're gonna run him with a Garmin belt on. I'm gonna turn the collar on and transmit it on. Usually you want to wait a second and make sure you get synced up. Make sure this sends up to the satellite and this sends up to the satellite and we can we know where it's at. So turn him loose until it's until we have the signal. Okay, he's a little warm here, that's okay. We got ponds along the way. Um, it's like 65 degrees right now. Um, in a hunt test, we're gonna we're, we run him, we're, we're gonna get him wet before we take off. Uh, a lot more efficient. Um, their retrieves are a lot better. A, a really warm dog kind of struggles to retrieve. They're breathing real heavy. It's hard for them, harder for them to hold on to the bird. So they, uh, they struggle to retrieve a little bit more. So before we do any retrieving, today we're just gonna blank these birds uh, with a blank pistol. 
if we do any retrieving, um, typically I'll get him in the water first. But I always watch him for heat. You know, even 65, 70 degrees, you can get heat exhaustion. So we'll, when he gets warm, there's two ponds along the way. He'll dip in and cool himself down. I like to ease forward a little bit. If you watch him here, ease forward kind of slow. Watch his tail and his mannerism here. They almost go on point, so you can, you can try to trigger this before you cast them on. in near a bird I don't flush that bird, blanket, he should stay there. He might pivot to mark. Um, I'm really going to concentrate on his feet, you know, keeping his feet still. So I have my collar ready. And set it kind of low. And then we only use nicks for woe. Uh, here, heel and kennel, we use tone and continuous. Or well, we'll just use a nick to reinforce that if he moves.
now I can't let him go in there and chase that bird. That bird's just inside of here. We want him to go to the left. So I'm gonna angle this to the left a little more. That's where our course goes. Try to ease forward enough till he kind of goes on point. Uh, you know, look, I like him to look nice when you cast him off. We're working on that. Oh, we're working on that. Oh. Hey, hey, hey! I wouldn't be talking right in front of a dog on point normally, but this dog is developed to this level. He's 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 pretty steady. Um, he's he's pretty far along, so I can so I can talk a little bit before I go over there and work the bird. Uh, but I didn't use the collar at all in the last bird. I just have it ready. If he starts moving his feet, I'll just pulse that nick till his feet stop, and then um, stop the pressure basically. after the birds some positive reinforcement food praise and play are your three main means of positive reinforcement petting praise works good uh, right after a bird like that
distracted by the birds. It's kind of contest field trials. A lot of times there's a lot of stuff going on. Sometimes there's another dog coming to back. Uh, whatever. There's always a lot going on. The dog has to stand for a while after a bird sometimes. Um, so I try not to rush off. Uh, try to have them stand nice and still. If they move, just put them back. They're very place oriented. So put him back right where he was. Uh, let him stand there a little bit. A little bit of calm praise. You can see this dog, you don't have to get excited with them. They're excited enough to chase this bird. So it's all about when you put your hands on them, you want them calm. And ideally, he'd be getting out further. Um, and that's okay, he wanted some of that fresh green rye there. He messed around, he wanted to pee a little bit. Don't give him any time to do that. Just, if you're on foot, you almost, you basically gotta run. If you can, just run and get it moving. And then try to race him around the course. Um, yeah, don't give him time to bobble if you can. And ideally, he'd be getting out further, but that's okay. We're developing him to move forward, uh, find the birds, handle them. style or their staunchness. So be careful with uh, handling them around birds. Hey, hey! We gotta go forward. We can't go back and chase them. Good. A little petting. Good job. Put it right in the crate because we're at the end of the line. You could have ran a lot bigger there, but that's okay. We're uh, 
developing him to move that way. And then when you get him in a trial or a hunt test or uh, some of those situations, they're just more adrenaline flowing through the dogs. So they run a lot bigger. They get moving a lot faster. They get to be more, yeah, just they run a lot bigger and a lot faster. And when we're on an ATV, we can kind of keep up with him too and keep him moving forward, not give him a chance to mess around along the way. Uh, the way I walked in on that last bird, that's kind of how you want to do it. If you can get to that level where the dog points and holds, you go straight in, flush the bird. I always keep my body turned so I can see the dog in my peripheral vision. You, you just try not to take your eye off him. And I also always have my hand on the transmitter. I didn't use it this whole run, except for that tone to pull him out of there to when we want him to go forward um, was the only thing we did. That's just an audible tone on the collar. And he's conditioned to kind of come back to us uh, when he hears that. So he came out of the cover, he saw us, we kept scooting him forward. That's the only time I used it. I just had it ready in case he moved his feet. I'll discourage the unwanted behavior with the, with the momentary, uh, with that nick button. And I uh, uh, didn't need to use it. He stood nice. But ideally, walk right in there, keep your eye on the dog, flush the bird, blanket, try not to take your eye off of the dog. Um, I also like to swivel my head a little bit to see where the bird is going and what the bird is doing so I can keep moving forward after the bird. Uh, but ideally, you don't distract the dog. If you want more style and intensity, less distraction. Um, you know, develop the dog to the point where they can do it without being distracted. And it kind of comes down to your woe work. Get a nice solid woe. And then as you start to apply woe to birds, kind of do that cautiously, um, trying to distract the dog too much from the point. If you notice your dog is flagging or, or um, losing staunchness, uh, it's probably time to slow down and be careful uh, with your handling around the birds. But he maintained his style. Uh, that's great. Walk right in, flush the bird blanket, come back, pet him a little bit calmly, and then we go on to our next bird or back to the crate for the end of the course. Thank you.